Hi everyone, good morning and happy Friday and welcome to Healing Journeys today. My name is Shane Sexton and I am your guest teacher on Fridays for the month of August. Um, and today we are going to be talking about um, what happens when you unexpectedly lose a loved one and find yourself in a season of grief. Um, truthfully, I was debating whether or not uh, I was going to teach on this topic. Um, <laughs> my dad passed away 17 years ago and honestly, last week on Wednesday night during Bible study, I really felt the Holy Spirit tell me that is what you are going to teach on and we're actually going to do this in two parts. Um, but even further confirmation of that, you know, I didn't say to anybody at the time that um, I felt that the Lord was leading me to share about my dad and my own journey going through grief. Um, and then Julianne approached me after Bible study and asked me, are you going to talk about your dad? So there you have it. There was my confirmation. Um, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. So um, we'll see how I do. I have makeup on. I don't know if that was a mistake or not. We'll see uh, how many tears I may shed just because it, this is recounting um, a difficult season to say the least. So just to give you a little background, um, I'm an only child. I grew up in a very loving home and had two great examples um, for parents. They were each other's best friends and I was a total daddy's girl growing up. Um, I get my height from my dad. He's the one that taught me how to play basketball, how to play poker, how to play pool, would always play board games with me. Um, and when we would go visit family um, back in Ohio during the summers, um, my dad and I, well, we would go as a family, but um, we would always go to Cedar Point, which is, uh, has the record setting roller coasters in the world. Um, and my mom would typically read a book for the day and then it would be my dad and I hanging out and uh, going on roller coasters. So needless to say, um, I was very close with him and definitely didn't expect um, at the end of my senior year of high school for him to be diagnosed with kidney cancer. Um, so I know that some of you on this platform are dealing with your own battles and you're in the right place, um, as far as to get the biblical grounding and teaching and know your authority. Um, I can tell you, obviously I didn't, I, we as a family didn't necessarily have, um, the same understanding of what is taught on this platform um, of the biblical, easy for me to say, um, of the biblical truth of how the Lord heals. But um, so he was diagnosed with cancer at the end of my senior year of high school. And um, going into college, I went to Westmont College up in Santa Barbara. And um, you know, he had had surgery my freshman year and to remove a lot of the cancer. And we had chosen a couple of different paths, right? We, um, in addition to the surgery, he had undergone chemotherapy and we were also working with a, uh, a doctor that was a naturopath and nutritionist um, so that his body was getting the most as far as vitamins and minerals kind of attacking it on those two fronts and you know we were Christians and believers at that time and had friends and family praying for him as well um and come the end of my freshman year of college so I was 18 going on 19 at the time um or maybe it was the beginning of my sophomore year. I can't quite remember the time frame on that, but um, it seemed like everything was pretty much clear, but a couple spots had moved to his lung. And 
to kind of make a long story short, he chose to do radiation. Um, and unfortunately that ended up causing a lot more problems. Um, and towards the end of my sophomore year, Um, I was, it was the week before finals, um, and he had gone into the hospital for a blood transfusion, which we had thought would, um, would help because it had previously when he had gone through chemotherapy, but it ended up revealing a lot more problems and my mom had called me on a Friday night and said, you need to come home. Um, your dad almost went home to the Lord tonight. And I know he almost went home to the Lord because from what my mom was sharing with me, I, she was sitting in the hospital room with my dad and uh, he literally saw Jesus calling him home and was verbalizing that. And <laughs> my mom being the firecracker that she is, is yet, excuse me, yelling for the nurses and then grabbing him and saying, don't you dare go anywhere. Your daughter needs to get home to say goodbye to you. And he stayed for a few more days so that I could come home to see him. And um, I think I'll just pause right there and even say, you know, the fact that my dad stayed a few days um, is such proof. And I know that this has been taught here on this platform, but when we look at the Gospels, right, um, in the life of Jesus, all all four of them recount his death on the cross. And uh, I really should have grabbed tissue for this. <laughs> um, you know, if like Luke and John in particular, um, in Luke 23, starting in verse 44, it talks about how Jesus is on the cross and Verse 46 says, he calls out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And, you know, personally going through this journey myself, um, I think that hit in a different perspective of, you know, my dad saw his savior calling him home and he wanted to go. He could have stayed, but he chose to go. And, um... As hard as the next few years were, because it was really a good like three to four years before my mom and I both learned what a new normal was. Um, a couple of things I like, one, if any of this is resonating with you right now, know that you're not crazy if you are crying uncontrollably or just a wave hits you to where you you're literally wait I don't know what else to call it other than wailing like you are crying from the depths of your soul and the core of your being to the point where your body physically produces no more tears like I don't think I ever understood mourning or grieving or what wailing really was until you go through it so Please know that you're not crazy if you find yourself in that space, if you've lost a loved one. Um, I don't know what else to say other than that's normal and you're not alone in that. And the waves don't hit as hard over time. Um, time does heal. But I have to say, kind of going back to right, Jesus surrendering his life and and my dad choosing to go home to the Lord in heaven. 
um, as hard as those years to follow were. And like I said, it took three to four years before I felt quote unquote normal again. Um, if anything, at that point, it was, oh, it's such solid proof that what we believe is true. Like, as much as I knew that that would be a hard road even the morning that he left, um, I gotta say, I also looked up and said, all right, Lord, like, I know you have him. I don't, you know, those weren't hallucinations of a dying man. That was, he saw his savior and his maker and creator calling him home. So I really submit to you, if you are having a tough time or just feel like maybe you're angry at God or don't understand why, please understand that your loved one is with him and you will get to see them again. I know that doesn't necessarily make it easy on this side of heaven, right? But there's the assurance of what we believe is true. And that was such a huge pillar for me walking in that season because, you know, I think when we, whew, when we go through any hardship and right, right? You have two choices. Like you can either press in and lean on the Lord or you can rail 180 degrees in the other direction and completely walk away from him. So what, what is your choice going to be? Um, and I am so grateful that the Lord has really sustained me. And um, even when my dad was in the hospital before he passed, like he looked at my mom and I and said, I want to go home. And I know the Lord is going to take care of you both. And the Lord really has. Um, you, gosh. When you lose a parent, when you lose a loved one, when you lose a friend, I think, uh, you know, the Lord has many different names, right? Maker, Creator, Emmanuel, God with us, Healer, Savior, one of his names is also Comforter. And I think you learn uh, the capacity of how the Lord comforts. And in the midst of a season of deep grief, you have a peace that passes all understanding that can wash over you too. Like a deeper peace than anything you've ever known and a comfort more than you've ever known. If you allow the Holy Spirit to fill that space in you. Um... And it actually <laughs> makes me think of, if you want to turn your Bibles to um, 2 Corinthians 1, verses 3 and 4, which says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. For just as the sufferings of Christ flow over into our lives, so through Christ, our comfort overflows. And I really want to make it clear um, within those verses, you know, God is not the one putting suffering on you. He does tell us that in a life walking with him, we will experience persecution. But as things, uh, as life sucker punches you sometimes, I guess you could say, you know, he is there to be your comforter. He is there to be your peace. He is there to walk you through it and be your guide. Um, and just the beauty of experiencing his comfort in that, I think, allows us to be more compassionate towards other people that may be on a similar journey that we have walked through. Um, I definitely have uh, a number of friends at this point being in my mid thirties. Um, I have a number of friends that have lost their parents and just, they've been so, I mean, both of us are thankful to, to have those relationships with each other where we can have those discussions that, um, unfortunately you kind of only know if you've walked this road. So, um, 
And even one other thing I, I wanted to touch on going back to um, the Gospels and when Jesus is dying on the cross. Um, you know, honestly, if you're really, if you're questioning things, one, God is big enough for your questions. Um, he can handle that. So ask the questions. If you find yourself in this season of grief, by all means, ask those questions. Um, but one of the things that the Lord has shown me and really taught me too, you know, I think we look at Jesus' life and his death on the cross and his resurrection as, well, the, uh, this is what was prophesied about in the Old Testament, right? And this is what was supposed to happen. But, you know, God came down as a human being, um, but... God the Father also understands what it is like to lose his son. His son died a brutal death. Yes, he rose again three days later from the grave, but I don't think we should be discounting the fact that he, he watched his son die a brutal death. So he understands what it is like to go through grief and there's even I mean there's proof of that when you're reading his word um you know and so the four areas that count well excuse me in the four gospels that um talk about Jesus dying on the cross right I'll give you the verses just for reference um in the book of Matthew, it's Matthew 27, 45 to 56. In Mark, it's Mark 15, 33 to 41. In Luke, it is Luke 23, 44 to, let's see, 49. And then in the book of John, it's John 19, 28 to 37. Um, and... Matthew, Mark, and Luke all, well, and I think John too, yeah, they all account for, um, it says Luke twenty three forty four. it was now about the sixth hour and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour for the sun stopped shining and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Um, and just pausing right there, right? Darkness fell over everything. I mean, when we look back even in the Old Testament as early as Genesis, you know, it was common practice, one, that you tear your clothing, um, that you're putting ash on you, um, that you wear a sackcloth that's made of goat's hair, you typically, to signify that you're in mourning. I mean, I think it's very logical to look at uh, the darkness falling over and essentially a storm. Like that's God using his creation to literally cry out for his son dying on the cross. Um, and the curtain of the temple was torn. And I think we're, uh, we're taught a lot, right, that Obviously, when Jesus died on the cross and the temple was, uh, the curtain in the temple was torn for the Holy of Holies, that was the point at which, you know, instead of a priest needing to walk through the temple and go into the Holy of Holies and make a sacrifice annually for the sins of the people, and that in the Holy of Holies in the temple is where the presence of the Lord rested by that curtain ripping that's now we have a direct relationship between us uh, you know and the holy spirit god the father like we have that direct connection we don't need a priest to do that for us to atone for our sins to communicate with the lord we can do that directly right but also the fact that the temple curtain was torn in two um that's a sign that's outlined throughout the Old Testament um, that shows 
and expresses mourning and grief. So there's definitely a couple layers there, right? Um, we can go back and look at in the first record we have of something like this is in Genesis 37, where um, it begins the story of Joseph, right? And Joseph is the youngest son of Jacob, um, Jacob being Israel. But yeah, that's his youngest of 12 sons. And Joseph's 11 brothers uh, had originally plotted to kill him. And instead, they ended up selling him into slavery, which, you know, that's no better either. Um, but they, they drenched his cloak in goat's blood, if I remember correctly, and took it back to Jacob, their dad, basically to make it look like as if he had been slaughtered by an animal. And in Genesis 37, verse 34, Jacob's first reaction after this, then Jacob tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, and mourned for his son for many days. So, and that's the first book of the Bible that that's accounted for. And we know that Jesus fulfills every prophecy that was spoken about him. And in addition to the Bible being relevant today, it was also culturally relevant at that time for things that um, the Jewish Hebrew culture would know. So I think, you know, looking at that, the temple curtain was torn. That is a sign of the Lord's mourning and his grief. Um, okay, let me look at my notes here. Let's see what else. Um, all right, so I've covered a lot of things so far, actually. We're making good time. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, those were some of the things that happened. I I can tell you that after my dad's passing, like I had said, the next three to four years um, were difficult to say the least. And there's, there's still obviously like memories or things that I have, but I think um, the Lord is so faithful in how he will excuse me, um, take care of you in those seasons. And if, if you're looking like one of the things I will say that helped me as well, um, there, excuse me, <laughs> I should have gotten that tissue. Um, one of the things that really helped me in the process after finding myself in this place, right? Um, after losing a parent um, at one of the local churches in my area, they actually had a group called Grief Share that is meant for people who have lost a loved one. Um, and there's not, it's like, I think a 10 week course. I can't speak to what, what their doctrine is at this point, just because it's been, you know, like 16 years since I did that, but um, if you can find a group like that, I would highly encourage that just because it gives you some practical tools even, right? I think, yes, the Lord is our comforter, um, but it's kind of helpful to, to talk with other people that have walked through that road and that are further along, um, and one of the key takeaways I even remember from going to that grief share group is find a way to develop new traditions. Um, and this is not me saying like, completely forget what you used to do and don't honor that person, none of that. But, um, you know, holidays, birthdays, those are, those are kind of markers that can tend to be the most difficult. So 
find new traditions that you may enjoy. I can tell you that, you know, as typically for holidays, for like both Thanksgiving and um, Christmas, my mom and I either invite friends over or we go to a friend's place. And that is one of the things for us where we, you know, it's, it's kind of almost like a step of renewing your mind in a sense of you're changing things up a bit so that you can heal on the inside. Um, and, you know, I, one of the other things we do on the, on the day that he passed away, uh, that anniversary every year, my mom and I spend together and we just honor that day with my dad. Um, yeah. And there was one other thing I wanted to share. Um, If anything, I would tell you also when you're going through this season, ha, I remembered, you know, and this is not me trying to be Christianese, but ground yourself in the word, spend time with the Lord. Um, it like, it's, yeah, it's one of those seasons where you learn, wow, like joy is a choice. Relationship with the Lord is a choice. Um, and he can sustain you through that and take her, take you to deeper depths than you've ever known. Um, and his word is true when it says, you know, Psalm 68, 5 says, uh, a father to the fatherless, a defender of widows is God in his holy dwelling. And he is, he is your defender. He is your father. Um, your yeah when you don't have an earthly father anymore um your heavenly father takes on a whole new meaning um and i just think of uh, james 1 too which says that religion that god our father accepts as pure and blameless is to look after orphans and widows in their distress um yeah and I would just say, protect your mind, renew your mind daily in the word of God, but protect what you're hearing as well. Um, and whose counsel you take, whose counsel you seek, hopefully you're seeking the Lord's first. Um, Cause I can say also, you know, the one other thing that I think may have shifted my dad's mindset where he, he stopped fighting and was tired and wanted to go home was um, when he was in the ICU, he overheard the doctor talking to my mom and had said, you know, I don't understand how your husband is still alive in his condition. And him hearing those words, I think, changed some things for him. And... I don't fault the doctor. I don't fault my dad. I just, if anything, it is my encouragement to you to continue grounding yourself in the Lord and seeking the teaching as well that is Bible-based of the other um, contributors on this platform that have had their own healing journeys because I think what we fill our ears with and our mind with, like what we're allowing that space to be, uh, says everything because if your mind and your spirit are willing, your body will follow suit. Um, and if you have any questions at all, like I said, I was probably going to do this in two parts. We're at about the 30 minute mark. Um, but if you have any questions, like if if you are either supporting somebody that finds themselves in a season of grief, if you yourself are going through grief, um, any questions that you may have that you want to candidly ask as somebody who's been through it, um, please ask in the comments below. What I plan on doing is essentially reading them over the next week um, 
up until Thursday, pretty much, um, so that I can prepare for <laughs> next Friday's teaching. But yeah, any questions that you do have, please put them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them for you. Um, and I'm sure depending on what you ask, it will probably jog other memories and things that will come up. But uh, yeah, the last thing I will say, you know, when my dad passed, one of my biggest prayers at that time was that he would bring in other father figure replacements because I think we still need that parental guidance, right? Like, mom is great for some things, dad is great for another. Um, so, if you find yourself in this season, I really pray and just ask that the Lord bring you those parental figures that you need. Because um, I can say he is faithful to do so. I have... There's one guy that my dad played basketball with on Saturdays that is like, him and his wife are like an aunt and uncle to me, but he has been one of those people that has stepped in that space as a father figure, as a mentor, as somebody that is a wonderful resource. And I'm so grateful that is close enough as family. Um, I know that my uncle, my uncle John will be the one to walk me down the aisle one day um and that's just so special to me too because he's the one that originally introduced my parents to one another so when it's my time and I get to walk down the aisle he'll be the one to walk me down the aisle I could say that Butch Hartman is another father figure that is actively in my life as well so all of that to say the Lord is faithful to take care of you. He is your comforter. He is your heavenly father. And if you're fatherless or motherless, he is your father. He will take care of you greater than any earthly parent can. So I know there were quite a few tears on my part today, but it's very sensitive subject matter and kind of opening those parts that have been healed in the past but I think I will leave that as it is um, I pray that you have a wonderful weekend and rest of your week and yeah like I said any comments or questions you have please put those in the comments below um, and we'll pick this up next week <laughs>